Welcome. I'm Peg Luxick, Republican candidate for lieutenant governor in the state of Pennsylvania. One of the jobs of a government official is to act as an advocate for the citizens that they're representing. Recently, a group of retired steel workers came to me with a problem. After I had listened to what they said and read the documents, I decided that even though I'm not yet elected, I wanted to give them the opportunity to tell their story. The people you are about to see are the actual people involved, and they're going to tell their story in their own words. And then I'll be back at the end to give you a wrap up. Baxter. Jeff is a retired steel worker here in Johnstown, and he has a story to tell. Now, throughout this campaign, I've been talking about how government officials should actually be advocates for the people. So you're not going to see me in this video. You're going to be seeing the people who have a story to tell and I'm here to help them tell it. Now, Jeff, this is kind of weird because you're looking at me through a camera. Uh, Jeff is a retired steel worker in Johnstown. And Jeff, you and your fellows here, and just so that, uh, for a second, I'm just going to slowly pan so that the folks can see how many people we have here in Johnstown, all of whom are retired steel workers and or their spouses. And Jeff, you and your fellows worked for? Freight Car America. And you negotiated a contract for a wage and benefit package that everybody agreed to and was duly signed and authorized. Right. And then after you retired, the company attempted to change the contract. That's correct. And so a court case ensued. What yeah. happened? Uh, Freight Car America denied us our uh, uh, health care. They. Uh, said they're not paying it anymore. So we had to uh, pick up our own health care from uh, for 29 months. Uh, the union... And what uh, union was it? It was the United Steel Workers of America located in Pittsburgh. Um, they went on our behalf to try to help us out with this. And uh, the company settled out of court at the federal court in Johnstown. And it was around $31 million that was uh, settled for. Okay, stop. So at that point, the company, uh, which had changed the contract, there was an out-of-court settlement, and the company now is no longer involved. Right. The company paid the settlement appropriately, and the company is done. Yes. And now the money went where? It went to the VIBA fund under the United Steelworkers. What is a VIBA fund? It's a voluntary uh, benefit for uh, health care. Okay. And the money was supposed to be for these retired folks and their spouses so that you guys could get health care and uh, death benefits, right? For Correct, life insurance yes, policy. yes. And now, are you receiving those? No. Uh, it, there's a fine line between it. Uh, each retiree, there were 650 of us. Each retiree, would the money would have broke down to around $74,000 for each retiree. Uh, now, that sounds like a lot of money. <laughs> so that money is to pay for the health insurance, and it would have been like your life insurance policy. Right. Okay, so when, you know, most of us have life insurance policies that we have, so this was basically both of those things all rolled into one. Correct. Okay. And so did you get the money? I got a portion. They reimbursed us, the VIBA reimbursed us from, for 29 months of what we paid out of pocket. For uh, health insurance. For health insurance. They broke it down to, if you were Medicare eligible, you only received like 2350 if you were non-Medicare eligible, you received around $6,900. But you had to turn in everything for them 29 months so you could get reimbursed. Once that happened... And let me stop you again. So you didn't get any extra money. You turned in receipts, and it was a dollar-for-dollar dollar reimbursement for what you paid. Yes. Except if you were Medicare eligible, you didn't get a dollar-for-dollar dollar reimbursement for what you paid? No, you didn't. So you got less if you were Medicare eligible. Right. Okay. Then what happened? Uh... Then it was that the, the union, uh, the VIBA, they sent out uh, papers and that. They had meetings down in town that uh, they would uh, get health care insurance for us. Well, the way it works out is what they want to offer us, the majority of us, you know, can't afford. So we went out and got our own insurance. That Why we can't can afford. you afford it? It's, it's too costly. What I pay right now is $20 a month. And for the same thing, uh, I would have to pay $64 out of my own pocket, and the VIBA would in turn put $201 in, which is $265 for one month. And if you was to take that $265, it would pay 14 months of what I'm paying $20 for, and it's, it's the same amount, same insurance. 
You're Medicare eligible? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, would the VIVA lose money or gain money? Is this a savings to them to reimburse you? Uh, they're saying it is. But, okay. Uh, How, the insurance that they want you to purchase, whose insurance is it? Can you pick whatever insurance you want? Well, there's. Uh, it was Highmark, Blue Shield and Blue Cross, and it was UPMC, and I'm not sure, maybe some of the other members might have had something else. But there was like, I'm going to say two or three different uh, plans you could uh, get, which, uh, you know, personally, none of them benefited me. Because the premiums were too expensive. Right, right. What about if you're on Medicare? Would you have to get off of Medicare to buy this premium? No. With the plan, they have a plan that uh, covers Medicare. Like I said, I'm on Medicare, and I pay $20 a month. Their Medicare plan is $64 a month plus 201 out of the VIVA. So. And so all you're looking for is for them to reimburse your $20 a month? All we want them to do is pay what we already have. So that would actually save them money? Yes. Except yeah. they're now not paying anything because no. you're not. No. How much money is in this fund? Probably, I'm going to say $29 million, 28 to $29 million, I'm not sure. Okay. Now, there are also, I, we looked at the crowd, there are other folks affected. So we're going to walk over and talk to a couple of, these are widows, right? Yes. You're going to introduce me to them. So we're going to walk over now. Okay. And I'm going to take our audience with us, and we can see the two lovely ladies sitting here. So we'll start with our lovely lady here. And That's can cool. you say your name? My name's Donna Plunkard. And can you tell us your story? My story is they wanted me to get their health insurance. With what it was going to cost me, I wouldn't have had nothing else to live on during the month. How much was the health insurance that they wanted you to buy? They wanted 700 and some dollars. That was the premium? Yes. And you're a widow, right? Yes. And so your monthly income is? Right now it's a little over $1,000. So basically you would be paying 70%. Do you have health insurance at all? As of this point, no. Okay. And what is it you would like them to do? Give me an affordable health care. Can you purchase health care somewhere else for less money? For example, if you went on to one of the exchanges. I'm waiting for to get on Medicare, which would be around June. Okay. But then, unless you buy health insurance from them, they won't reimburse you for that either? No. So the money that was from the settlement, you didn't receive it, and the only way that you can access health care benefits is to pay 70% of your income for health care premiums? Correct. Okay. That sounds a little extreme to me. Let's see what our other lovely lady has to say. Now, your name is? I'm Carmen Novak. Hi, Carmen. And can you tell us your story? Well, um, my husband passed away also, and when he worked on the car shop, we were promised insurance for the rest of our lives. And by contract? By contract. And everyone agreed to that contract? Yes. Okay. It took a lot of concessions over the years to be able to have the extra benefits. So in a wage and benefit package, they conceded wages to get this benefit? Yes. Okay. And now, where are you now? Well, now I'm on Medicare. And uh, that's cost me money, and on top of the Medicare, I did decide to take their Blue Cross and Blue Shield plan, but that's still almost $100 out of my pocket. And I'm on a fixed income. I'm only getting 70.5% of my husband's Social Security. So it's not easy. To pay that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for sharing your story, ladies. I appreciate it from You're both welcome. of you. You're now, welcome. Jeff, where did you go? Okay. So let's come back to Jeff, and we're going to walk over here. Jeff, we're going to sit down to save my arms. <laughs> so you have been talking to the Viva, Viva folks, and first you asked if the money that was supposed to be for your benefit could just be given, divvied up equally among the folks here. Yes. And they said no because? Uh, the way the court order come down, that they they said that uh, we'd have to pay taxes on Social Security and all this. They said it's, it would benefit us to leave the money where it's at, <clears throat> which is fine. But what we want them to do is, like, if our payment's $20, $60, $100,
pay for it. Don't have us taken out of our pocket. And when that money's exhausted, we'll see you. Because we had to fend for ourselves for 29 months. We paid out of our pocket, each and every one of them in here. So it would just be the same way. And the way it's going now, I mean, you can see we're a bunch of oldies in here. And last year, we lost 18 retirees. $1.8 million is what the widows should split up, but it went back into VIBA. So once the retiree dies, there's still money there that should be theirs is in the VIBA. So the money that we're talking about, just to be clear, was part of the wage and benefit package that you guys negotiated with the company that you worked for in a duly executed contract that everybody agreed to. Yes. And so those were your benefits right. that you, and life insurance, et cetera. Yes. Now, I know that you told me about a group in West Virginia. That's Ravenswoods. And what happened there? Uh, well, Tom Brawley and myself, we uh, talked to a lady down there. Her name was Carol. And what they did, they were in the same boat as us. Uh, they had their representatives, uh, their governor, and a, a lot of other union officials helped them out. And the way Carol says it, every place that the union had a uh, event or going on, she says they had a busload of the retirees that they went there and they protested in front of everything. And it got to the point where the union says, here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you the money. Each retiree will get $275 a month, and the spouse will get $275 a month. And when that money is exhausted, it's done and they agreed to it. So that's how the union worked with them. And is that what you're basically asking the union to do for yes. you? Yes. Yeah. So why the union is sitting on this money, and uh, you, we noticed that this is not a young crowd. So when you folks are not here anymore, where does the money go? Back in the VIBA fund. But then who benefits from it? The VIBA. Is, you mean the union? Yes. So who then would get the funding? None of us. Well, what it sounds to me like is as if I had a job and I um, negotiated for a wage and benefit package, and then somehow, somewhere, that wage and benefit package wound up not benefiting me at all. It wound up being held by another organization that eventually was used to pay somebody else's wages and benefits. Right. Am I looking at that correctly? Yes. Now, you've been to government officials, and without naming names, my understanding is you've been to state officials, federal officials, at both parties, every level. Yes. And everyone agrees that something is radically wrong with this picture. Yes. And they keep saying since it was um, settled in a federal court, there's nothing they can do. They said to get an attorney. No attorney will touch us. Uh, you can see as a group here, we, we don't have the money to gather up to get an attorney. But everybody, every attorney we said or anybody we talked to say, you guys should get an attorney. We can't afford it. And like we're caught in between a rock and a hard place. Well, there you have it. You know, it's important to remember in this story that these are folks who just did their jobs. They negotiated a contract in good faith. They honored the contract that they negotiated. And then after they retired, they found out that their word and their good faith was not enough. They're now embroiled in a conflict with the United Steelworkers Union, who has basically said that their wage and benefit package can no longer be used for their benefit. Imagine if that were one of us, that we negotiated a contract and did the work for a wage and benefit package, only to find out years after the fact that some powerful group had decided to usurp what we earned and what we worked for and then dole it out to us maybe if we met conditions that they sent. Now the agreement with the steelworker says that they can renegotiate. They can change how these folks are, are treated at any time and as you heard they're not asking for much. They're asking for basically the same settlement that the people in West Virginia got, that they would get every month enough money to go toward their own health care of whatever type they chose that best meets their needs. That's not unreasonable. That's what most of us are asking for. So I hope as you listen to their story 
that you will join them in talking back to the steel workers and letting them know that these retired workers do not stand alone that the citizens here in this commonwealth have their backs and want them to get justice it's the least we can do as i move forward in this campaign and hopefully once elected i hope to be able to continue to be a voice for the little guy you know i'm five foot two it's kind of appropriate that i stand for the little guy the average citizen who does their job raises a family pays their taxes and often is the one forgotten in all the push and pull of the big special interest groups i hope that we've been able to do something to help these forgotten people and i hope that together moving forward we're able to stand for other forgotten people across the commonwealth i'm peg looksick and i thank you so much for listening